to put a bow on this part of the conversation anyway, just Blake Griffin. Uh, again, you know, Mark Stein has already attached him on Twitter, at least teams with interest. Won't surprise anyone. The Lakers, the Clippers, the Nets, the Heat, the Warriors, among those that have expressed interest in Griffin. Celtics not listed. Maybe they're interested. Maybe they're not. Honestly, I don't know. The bigger question is, do we even think Blake would come to Boston? Celtics fans are going to do their thing on social media. It's always the way. You know, that's we're, we're all going to be asked about it a thousand times. I don't think there's any shot at him coming to Boston. I don't think he wants to. Uh, and I think there it's more likely he's going to choose a team, as mentioned earlier. It's just closer to contending this season. I assume you agree with that. Yeah, I, I've actually even been told that Boston's not on his list. Um, I think the two L.A. teams, Brooklyn and Miami, are the front runners. Miami uh, gives him, I think, more of an opportunity to play. Um you know, the Heat, of course, lost Myers Leonard. They're one, one big man down. You know, they've got Kelly Olynyk as a floor spacer. Griffin could kind of complement that. He's not, he's certainly not a floor spacer anymore. Not, not a very good one. But I think that Miami is kind of a dark horse in that mix. It, you know, there are just too many teams that want Blake Griffin that offer more things. And if you're Blake Griffin and you're probably walking away with like a $60 million check to cover the rest of this season and next, you don't give a damn about money right now. So you're playing for the minimum and just choosing the best situation. And I, I don't believe Boston will be uh, in the running. So Chris, we'll uh, let you go on this. The all-star game is this weekend and it's, it's become my favorite mid-season Celtics talking head argument that uh, it's really started a few years ago and it just it's annual at this point in time should these guys play in the all-star game. First, it was Kyrie Irving and then it's Kemba Walker. And now obviously You've got Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Brad Stevens was asked about it and said what he's always said, which is what you expect him to say, which is not nah, one game in the middle of a week. You know, it's they'll, they'll barely work up a sweat. No big deal. Now, if a lot of us, you know, had, had our druthers, maybe uh, Tatum, who is still clearly recovering, at least on the floor from the effects of COVID. And, you know, he has himself said that his breathing has been out of whack. So he is not back to 100% Jason Tatum. In fact, by his standards, you know, he hasn't been a bad player by any stretch, but by his standards, he has been off the last few, you know, 20 games or so. He has not nearly shot with the success rate that he did prior to that diagnosis. And then obviously Jalen Brown with the knee tendonitis, you know, it's his native Atlanta. That's fine. You know, go and and be part of the festivities take point in the uh, part in the three-point shootout you know because that's there's no wear and tear there but skip the game sit I mean that would be in in a perfect world that's how I would like to see this play out but it's not a perfect world and it's a player's league and nobody's going to tell these guys not to play so is this just one of those things where people need to get over it accept it and you know not not bitch and moan about the fact that oh my god these guys are playing in an all-star game yeah I'm I go back and forth on the all-star game and whether guys should play because it is, you know, multi-layered this year with the pandemic and should guys be going down there traveling, all that stuff. Uh, I don't have a huge issue physically with Tatum and Brown going down there. They're not going to expend any real energy. And because of, you know, the COVID restrictions, they'll basically be there for 48 hours. And I, I have found, and, and players have said this in the past that, you get something out of that if you're a young player being around other greats. You know, Jalen Brown's obviously never been there before as a player. Uh, Tatum, he's getting another crack. Uh, I, I get, you know, I think they will gain something from that experience that will help them in the second half of the season uh, and beyond. And look, from a, a COVID safety perspective, they're probably a lot safer being a part of this. I mean, the NBA is going to keep them in the basic protocols. Now, the NBA says other players are going to be testing during their time off. I mean, good luck with that. Like, good luck getting guys going on vacation to, you know, spit in a cup and FedEx it back to wherever you're sending it to. I'm, I'm highly skeptical that's going to happen. So I think they're probably safer from the pandemic being part of All-Star Weekend. I'm just, uh, like like any Celtic fan, you'd, you're, you're hoping that it's a nice, easy 15 minutes that the both of them play uh, in this game, and then they're sitting on the bench uh, in the fourth quarter, getting their rest. And if that if that's how it plays out, uh, I don't think there'll be any lingering issues. Well, I think that's why people are so alarmed. Is that's what people were hoping for with Kemba last year, and then he goes and plays almost forty minutes, and then he's yeah for the rest, you know, for the last year. Yeah, that's that. That's why I say go go fifteen, and then let somebody else uh, go out there and play. So yeah, we don't want uh, 
You don't, you don't want a, a rekindling of that experience. Oh, yes.